Hello everyone. This is a tutorial video on using Proteus for Fourier analysis. Uh, let's start the video. So I have selected the components mode and then go to the parts list or pick devices. So today I'm going to design a simple low pass filter and test its uh, Fourier spectrum to see whether it's working or not. So in order to do that, I'm going to use an op amp that is I'm going to use a active filter so I'll be needing resistors one pot if it is if it is required we will use that otherwise I won't be using the pot then capacitor and uh, okay capacitor then i'll be needing some sources such as the sinusoid sources uh, to create different frequency or different signal tones i think that's about it all right now the first order i'm going to use the first order circuit for this purpose so let's just uh, mirror this one okay so I'm just drawing the first order circuit first order low pass filter circuit all right and now Let's supply it with the correct DC voltages for the op amp by simple voltages. So let's say about minus 10 volt here, and let's say about plus 10 volt here. So that is good enough. And let's now connect this circuit. So this will be required to control the gains. Now I will be needing the input signal. So I'm going to use the series connection in order to add the different frequencies. So for a test case I'm using three different sinusoid sources to create three different frequencies all right so let's assume the capacitance value as 10 nanofarad and this resistance value as 15.92 uh, kilo ohms okay uh, this particular resistance and capacitance value will uh, will uh, make the cutoff frequency to be pre precisely 1 kilohertz. Uh, the equation for the cutoff frequency is uh, for the f uh, low pass filter is f is equals to 1 divided by 2 pi rc. So by choosing the value of c to be 10 nanofarad and then if I take the cutoff frequency to be 1 kilohertz then I can easily calculate the value of R from that and it will be around 15.2 kilohertz okay and for the gain purpose I am taking uh, both the uh, feedback and input resistance to be the same that is 10 kilo ohms uh, this will result in gain value of 2 so now let's create three different frequencies so uh, say this is 10 Hertz I want to give it as 10 Hertz and this is, will be say 500 Hertz 
and this will be a much larger one I guess uh, let's say one fold uh, it is beyond the cutoff frequency this is what I want to do say for example 2 kilo hertz uh, let's just increase this one 100 hertz okay no uh, frequency as 100 hertz so let me check once more 500 hertz and okay so so the three different frequencies that I have selected as you can see that two of the frequencies are below the cutoff frequency but one is above the cutoff frequency that is the 2 kilohertz frequency and I am expecting that frequency to be uh, gone actually it is not an ideal filter so it will, won't be uh, vanished in the output there will be some residue of it let's see how it works so uh, first of all what I want to do is um, I want to show you one another interesting thing uh, before connecting this circuit is that let me just delete it I want to show you the Fourier analysis of this one particularly this one so so go to the uh, probe mode first and select two probes at this input and another one at the output okay so name them as V out and uh, V in okay so I'm going to take a Fourier analysis or Fourier uh, analysis of this one I want to see the Fourier spectrum of this node and this node okay so now go to the graph mode choose the Fourier so let me draw two different two separate uh, windows for this purpose okay so first of all I want to use this V in in this one okay and V out I want to see the V out at this particular uh, window okay so this is what we have right now let's uh, run the simulation let's simulate the graph before doing that let's uh, so the maximum uh, resolution is 100 maximum frequency is uh, 100k okay all right I think that's okay start time is 0 seconds and stop time is 1 seconds okay let's let's reduce the time um, and make it 0.5 seconds or I can take one second that's okay fine so it will take uh, a more time so as you can see this is what we have right now okay this is what we have right now uh, I let's zoom in double click on it and you can easily see the frequencies at the start right I guess you can see the frequencies at the start let's uh, just edit the graph in order to show you or just click uh, so you can see that uh, at 2 kilohertz there is a peak right this was supposed to happen that means uh, you have a frequency at 2 kilohertz that we have given at around 500 hertz as you can see that at around 500 hertz you have again a frequency and at around the starting that is at around this is 100 hertz you have another frequency right so you can easily edit the graph and uh, set the maximum frequency to be 10k and then you can easily see the values with uh, much difficulty right so this is around 2 kilohertz then you have 500 hertz and you have around in the 100 hertz range right easily you can see this right so at the input side you have three different frequencies which is expected because I have added the three different frequencies using the sinusoidal sources now at the output what is happening after this first order active low pass filter uh, this RNC is chosen uh, in order to 
create a cutoff frequency of 1 kilohertz let's see what is happening here so I'm expecting that my 2 kilohertz will be uh, gone or vanished let's see what happens let's see now let's go here and now let's edit this one edit edit this graph and put the similar values 10k yes okay now if you compare this one now you can see that the 100 hertz is available uh, 100 hertz frequency is available at the output the 500 hertz is also available at the output but right now the 2 kilohertz is also available but the value of the 2 kilohertz is very small i think you can see that the spike is very small so it has seen good amount of attenuation so uh, uh, our cutoff frequency was 1 kilohertz so 2 kilohertz is beyond the cutoff frequency and as you can see the uh, frequency is attenuated at the output again I, I want to show you the uh, case for the input so see this one this 2 kilohertz this, this is the uh, Fourier spectrum at the input side and you can see that the two kil at 2 kilohertz there is a strong peak right with high amplitude but when when at the output you can easily see that the output has seen some attenuation at 2 kilohertz so we can easily say that our active filter is working thank you